Welcome to topic 9.3 on conservation of electric energy. In this third daily video, we're going to look at an experimental situation and analyze the data relating the speed of the particle to the potential difference that the particle moved through. And then we're going to use a graph of the data to calculate the unknown charge of the particle. I'm Scott Seacrest and I teach AP Physics C, Electricity and Magnetism at St. Francis de Sales School in Toledo, Ohio. So first, let's review some of the key ideas that we're going to need in this video. The change in electric potential energy of a charge field system when a charge moves through a potential difference is related to the change in electric potential between those two points. That change in potential energy of the system equals the charge that's moving times the potential difference between the two points that it moves between. And if we have a closed isolated system where there's no energy being added to the system or taken away from the system, there are no interactions with objects outside the system on objects inside the system, then the change in electric potential energy of the charge field system can be used to calculate the final speed of the charged particle. Because the only force that's acting is the electric force, which is a conservative force, this change in kinetic energy of the charged particle is equal to the opposite of the change in potential energy of the charge field system. So let's look at an example to practice. In this situation, we have a positively charged object with a mass of four times 10 to the negative five kilograms that's being released from rest at the positive plate of a parallel plate capacitor. And that capacitor is connected to a variable voltage power supply. The speed of the object as it reaches the other plate is measured for six different potential differences. So first let's understand the situation that we have. When we create a potential difference between the two plates, there's charge that goes on the plates and that creates an electric field between the plates. And the greater the potential difference is, the stronger that electric field is. A bigger electric field will cause a bigger force to act on the charged object. It will give it a larger acceleration. And so that charged object is going to have greater speeds when it reaches the other plate for those greater potential differences. And so if we look at the data, if we look at those potential differences, we can then look at the speeds with those different potential differences. And we can see that those speeds do get bigger as the potential difference gets bigger. Now what I'd like to do is to derive the relationship between that potential difference and the final speed of the particle. The change in potential energy of the charge field system is Q times the negative of the potential difference. It's going from the higher potential to the lower potential. So the change in potential is negative. And so we have this negative of the potential difference. The change in kinetic energy of the charged particle is the opposite of that change in potential energy, which is positive Q times the potential difference. And the change in kinetic energy is the final kinetic energy, one half MV final squared minus one half MV initial squared, but the initial speed is zero. So that change in kinetic energy just equals one half times the mass times the final speed squared. And if we set those two equal to each other, we have that Q times the potential difference equals one half times the mass of the particle times the final speed squared. Or rearranging this, we have that the potential difference equals the mass divided by two times the charge times the final speed squared. This is the relationship between the potential difference and the final speed. And we want to be able to graph this and get a linear relationship where the slope of our best fit line can be used to calculate a quantity. And so if we look at this equation, this looks like the equation of a straight line. If we put the potential difference, delta V, on the vertical axis, and we put the speed squared on the horizontal axis, then the slope of the line is going to be the mass divided by two times the charge. And this also has a vertical intercept of zero because when delta V equals zero, the final speed also equals zero. So because we're going to be looking at delta V and the speed squared, we need to calculate the speed squared values 
And so we can take each of the speeds and square them. And we're going to be using these speed squared values. So I took this data and used the online graphing program Desmos to graph the potential difference in volts on the vertical axis and the speed squared in units of meter squared per second squared on the horizontal axis. And we can see the data points line up along a straight line. And in this software, I was able to do a best fit line. I was able to do a linear regression and calculate the slope of a best fit line. And the slope of that best fit line is 2.503 volt second squared per meter squared. If you weren't using computer software to calculate the best fit line, you would take two points that are on the best fit line and you would use those to calculate your slope. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to use that slope to figure out what the unknown charge is. So looking at the relationship, the slope is the mass divided by two times the charge. That slope that we found, 2.503 volt second squared per meter squared equals the mass divided by two times the charge. And so plugging in the value for the mass that we were given, 2.503 equals four times 10 to the negative five kilograms divided by two Q. Or solving for Q, we have the mass divided by two times the slope. So four times 10 to the negative five kilograms divided by two times 2.503 volt second squared per meter squared. It gives a charge of 7.99 times 10 to the negative six coulombs. The charge that was moving through that potential difference needed to be 7.99 times 10 to the negative six coulombs. And so what should we take away from this? First, the potential difference can be used to calculate the change in potential energy of the charge field system for a charged particle moving through an electric field. That change in potential energy of the closed system, where the only force acting is the electric force, can be used to calculate the change in kinetic energy of the particle in the system. And that change in kinetic energy is related to the initial and final speeds. And so if we're given the initial speed, we can use that to calculate the final speed. The other thing we had here is we had the idea of linearizing graphs. And so when we're linearizing a graph, we look at the equation describing the relationship between the measured quantities and see how it can be rearranged to be in the form of y equals mx plus b. We then graph those quantities. In this one, it was potential difference on the vertical axis. It was speed squared on the horizontal axis. And we calculate the slope of the best fit line. And then we use that relationship that we derived to figure out how to relate the slope to an unknown quantity that appears in the relationship. Thank you for watching.